Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to build successful relationships with business owners long-term for your social media marketing agency. So guys, this is a super important topic because if you don't have that skill set on how to connect with business owners, how to build authority and how to build a strong relationship, you're going to really struggle to not only sign clients long term, but also get clients actually on the meeting. So one of the biggest reasons why a client's going to sign with you is because they resonate with you as a person, as a salesperson, as uh, a figurehead in the industry that can supply loads of value. So there are a few things that you need to make sure you don't do and a few things you, you need to make sure that you do do that will allow you to create a, a, a strong relationship with business owners that will potentially become a customer in the short term or the long term. My biggest piece of advice, which is point one, is every time you communicate with a potential business owner, make sure that you're not trying to sell something. If you've watched any of our previous videos, when we talk about how long it takes us to, to sign some clients, you'll know that it takes us, you know, sometimes six, seven, eight months, even up to even up to 18 months to get some businesses to, to sign with us and finally start working on their marketing campaigns. That doesn't mean we're getting on calls every day. We're getting on sales calls every week. It's, you know, we might get on a sales call today and then another one in two months time when they get a bit closer or they're, or they're, they're thinking about potentially starting. So what we make sure that we do is we don't pressurize them loads. Yes, there's there's urgency and scarcity tactics that we do on our meetings to get people to, to sign sooner rather than later, but sometimes you physically can't help a business not being ready to invest in your services. That doesn't mean you wave them goodbye and let them go on, you know, go off on their own and you never speak to them again and you just say, get back in touch when you've got the money or when the time's right. No, you need to keep that relationship strong build a relationship at, you know, person to person, business to business owner and grow that relationship because that's the only way you're going to build that connection, that relationship long term so that when they do come on, they become a better client because they're almost, you're a friendly face, you're a trusted face and you're potentially even a friend to that business owner. So don't sell every time you go on, get on a call with them to help them out with something. If they're, say, say you get on a sales call now and they're not ready to sign till the new year, get on a call with them mid-December to help them through anything that they're they're going through. Give them some pointers on their social media. Give them some ways they can improve the convertibility of their website or their funnel or give them some content ideas. That one hour of your time in between when they've told you to get back in contact with them, you know, yeah, it's a three hour consultancy call. That's going to go a hell of a long way with that business owner because you're going to be seen as a valuable figurehead that's not just after money like everyone else in the industry. So make sure that you have those contact periods in that time for those clients to take longer. Obviously, they're going to be clients where you get on a sales call and they're ready to go right away. But sometimes it takes those extra touch points where they just need someone to be that, not the savior, but someone they can rely on for free value that's not just out for money because it will go a hell of a long way, especially in the time we're in where everyone's just out for money. If you can just supply that small piece of free value to them, it will go a hell of a long way. Number two, which kind of piggybacks the, the point I've just made is become friends with them and, and gain common ground. So whether that be on a meeting, at the beginning of the meeting, when you're having small talk, if you've got kids and, and they've got kids, try and you know find some common ground there, make a joke, make some kind of small talk to, to show that you've got something in common with them. Even if it's as simple as talking about the weather outside, getting something in common with them and that you agree on is a great way to start a meeting and start a relationship. Number three, and all of these points kind of piggyback uh, the first point I made, which is don't be super annoying and super pushy to get the business. There's nothing worse than getting on a sales call or get, speaking to anyone, in fact, where they're, they're just, they're so persistent on right when are you starting when when are you going to pay me the money when it, you know pay me now when we're on the call you need to be a lot more relaxed so that you don't come across desperate one of the biggest mistakes beginners make and the reason why so many beginners struggle to get business in SMA and in any business in that matter is that they're seen as really desperate which that which which portrays the fact that they really need the business which shows them that they're not a successful agency or then they don't know what they're doing because any successful business it shouldn't be desperate for business. You need to almost flip it on the head and say, right, you're lucky to be working with us because we've got a few spots available. Number four is go way, way, way above and beyond for your clients. So massively over deliver on anything that you say, whether that be throwing in some extra consultancy hours, whether that be 
giving those free advice calls that I said previously for those clients that haven't become a client yet, whether that be throwing or adding on extra services that you don't charge for, throwing in social media management when you've just charged for Facebook ads, funnels, and email marketing, throwing on social media management, small small amount of your time providing you're not doing any of the content creation, you're just getting all the content from there and optimizing it on the different platforms. That's a great way to over deliver, which is therefore going to allow you to build a stronger relationship long term. Anything that you can do that puts you in uh, you know, a, a better light in the client's eyes is going to grow your relationship stronger with them because they then see you as actually looking out for them and having their best interests at heart rather than just being out for their money. It goes a hell of a long way, guys. And not only that, when you do that, you'll get paid on the back end when they refer you to more people because if you're going way above and beyond them, they're just going to scream and shout about your business rather than oh, I'm doing social media management. I'm going to charge you an extra £250 a month scrap the 250 pound a month do it for free get a referral for 1500 pound extra a month because you've got another client i know which one i would prefer and not only that it builds the relationship stronger with the client you've got therefore you keep them longer just be very human with these people like yes they're business owners and yes they're a client of yours and you need to have a professional relationship but show them that you really do care about them their business their money that you you know show them that you're not just burning cash through ads show them that you care about every part of their business not just their ad spend and wasting ad spend show them that you want to make them money in every aspect of their business and throwing on extra services and way over delivering is the best way to grow a relationship long term with them and to keep them paying you every single month and finally my final point guys of how to build strong relationships especially in the SMA industry and in the in the meeting is supply value rather than selling make selling an afterthought almost forget that you're selling without forgetting you're selling if that makes any sense at all so when you go into a meeting you need to make sure that it's pure value and i've said this in loads of calls loads of videos in the past that you need to make sure that sales meeting that the potential client comes away from it feeling like they've their time's been worthwhile even if they don't go ahead and work with you that you need to supply that much value help them out that selflessly that they become a client rather than being selfish and only talking about yourself and that's the quickest way to not build a relationship and not sign a client so supply loads of value tell them exactly how you're going to get them results almost give away your strategy because then then they're going to understand what you're going to do better because the only reason why they're not going to sign a, as a client with you is because they don't 100% understand what you're going to be doing for them. If they 100% understand, right, he's going to do this, this, and this, and it's going to get this result. So there's no reason why they won't sign with you because running Facebook ads and online marketing campaigns is as unarguable as one plus one equals two. Once you understand it, it's physically impossible for you not to think that's a good idea. So in the meeting, focus all of your attention on value rather than selling. It will, it will grow your relationship tenfold above everyone else that does the complete opposite everyone else and all the beginners in smma all the people that don't know what they're doing will get on a sales call and say right i do facebook ads i do funnel creation i do email marketing i do web design this is my price when do you want to get started do you have any questions no that's the wrong way to do it you need to educate them on all of the things you do personalize it to their business so that they almost sell themselves on it. And then they're just asking you questions that, that you can answer. And to end that point, what's also super important is that you listen. The, be the best way that you can grow a relationship and start a relationship is asking questions and listening to those answers. So the, the best kind of analogy I use when it comes to sales is be a doctor rather than a salesperson. So, so in that initial period, whenever you're growing a relationship, find out what they're struggling with, try and diagnose their problems for them. Because a lot of the time they'll be self-diagnosing, which is the worst thing to do. Ask them questions about every part of their business, do some digging, get them talking. They need to be talking way more than you. And you need to be probing them with the correct questions. Ask them what they feel like their strengths and weaknesses are, where, what services they want to be selling more of, where their pain points are in the business. What are they, what, what keeps them up at night as a business owner? All of these questions will get them talking and highlighting the problems themselves. When you go into any relationship and you're telling them all about the things they're doing wrong, it's getting it off on the wrong foot because you're all, that a lot of business owners will feel attacked. Whereas if you position yourself as that doctor figure and you get them to 
to kind of highlight the issues through your probing and, and through the questions that you ask, they're going to bring their problems to light and almost ask you for a solution because you've got them to recognize it. So when when you highlight a, when you highlight a problem of theirs, say that they're struggling to sell a particular service or product, and it's keeping them up at night. They're, they're they're struggling to pay their rent on their brick and mortar business. And you come in and say, well, do you know what, Tim? That product actually has amazing targeting options on Facebook. These are some ads that we've run in the past. These are some clients that we've had in the past. And these are the results we've got. Would you like to would you like to learn more? I'm going to explain exactly how you can do it. Give away the whole strategy because they're not going to be able to implement it. And then that and then they're almost going to ask you for the business by saying, Harry, let's do it. How much does it cost? And then they're asking you for the price rather than a beginner going in there and going, I run Facebook ads. This is how much it costs. It's completely flipped on its head. And you're being positioned as the higher figure because they're asking you for the business as if it was an inbound inquiry. So that's a great way to, to grow relationships. To summarize that, guys, that those are five or six really important points and, and, and keys to growing a successful relationship in SMMA, in business, online, through any kind of outreach or meeting. Don't sell on every time you speak to them. Grow the relationship long term. If they need those extra touch points, then give them. Be super valuable. Don't try and don't position yourself in the relationship as someone who's super greedy and desperate for the business and help out when you don't necessarily need to, but when they actually really need your help. And finally, go way above and beyond for them. Over deliver massively on what you said. So you pick up the referrals on the back end, even if that means to add extra services. And finally, in a meeting, position yourself as a doctor rather than a salesperson. Probe them with specific questions. Get them to identify their problems so you just offer a solution and you're the figurehead and authoritative figure in the relationship so that they come back to you when they're ready or even on the meeting when they're ready to hand over their cash for your marketing campaigns. Hopefully you enjoyed that video, guys. Hopefully you can take something from it and introduce it to the way you speak to clients moving forward, how you're managing relationships moving forward, and how you're potentially booking meetings and closing clients in those meetings. If you've not watched our previous video, it's on how I tried every single side hustle online side hustle growing up from the age of 17, how much I earned from each one. Give it a watch if you're interested. If you're wondering which kind of side hustle to go into, if you're worrying about switching, give it a watch. Let me know what you think. And yeah, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow at 9am.